how did how did Moo really start? How did the culture and Moo really start and get going? And, and how did magic really it. start and get going? How did how did how did humanity really start to connect with its spirit on Moo and what did that look like? So on Moo, human beings begin to take on a significantly more physical form than in previous eras on the Earth. In previous eras on the Earth, humans were more like a lighter and lighter density, um, maybe more like a gas or an air. And over time, humans have actually become denser and denser and denser. And that's kind of really part of what the fall is about. The fall is really, you could look at it as becoming denser and denser and denser. And the more dense we come, we become, the more individualized we come, we become. And the more individualized we come, the more we can sense um, the Godhead, the more we can sense the individualities of the Godhead, the more the more nuanced we become um, and the more we understand who and what we are. And so that was really beginning in Mu in a very significant way. And so something very, very interesting started to happen to women on Mu, not men, but women. And today we live in a very um, masculine dominated society. Whenever I'm researching um, and you know reading occult books, it's usually all about you know male brotherhoods. It's about um, men, it's about um, even the, uh, the great avatars being men. And women are sort of, um, in a way, the whole Isis ritual and the whole Isis culture is really sidelined and we do have a very almost like a you know um, only half of a magical culture um, really around today truly truly when we look back and we see how rich Mu was and how rich Atlantis was in the feminine type of culture and magic we look at where we are today and it is very 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 small so it's important to remember and to know that magic began with the women of Mu. What we know as esoterica today began with the women of Mu, the mothers of Mu, the great priestesses of Mu, everything. How did that begin? So what ended up happening was women began to feel and express the sort of feeling and undercurrents of the cosmos. So women are actually incredible, incredible, incredible receptors. And I talked about this in our last Q&A when we were talking about the differences between genders. And when you start getting into the development of yourself as a magical being or an intuitive being, a psychic being, there's a big difference between the male system and the feminine system. They can all be intuitive. They can all do incredible things. but there's a fundamental difference in um, capacities. Um, so one of the things um, that women are is women have the ability to really very easily merge um, and enmesh and take on spirit. And this is really exemplified even in their ability to, to have a child and to bring life into this world. It's just fundamentally different. And the womb actually the womb in women actually acts as a resonating chamber. So they can create incredible um, bioenergetic fields using their womb and using their real energy, which can create a very, very, very strong, and maybe if you're really good, high frequency. And what that does is it makes you a fertile energy so that the cosmos can basically fertilize you or the cosmos can come in pure rays of information can come in and you can receive them in a really big way and so women are incredible receivers um and it is that quality that really allowed women to begin to absorb pure spiritual energy the pure currents of the cosmos when I say currents of the cosmos, I'm talking about archetypal information. So, you know, as an intuitive, we talk about things like getting downloads. Um, we talk about um, feeling, being able to merge with a plant or merge with an animal with our bioenergetic field. Well, in Lemuria, you could do that almost just with your body. You could just merge. 
and the women were extremely good at this and they started to to basically express the pure vibrational frequencies of the cosmos they would just go into a trance they would feel whatever the energy was and then they would express it they would feel whatever the energy was and they would express it and that was really the beginning of the connection to spirit and humanity. It was simply just opening, feeling, expressing. There was no mind at the time. The mind is more of the masculine function and that came later at the very end of Lemuria going into Atlantis. But so what that means when I say that there wasn't really any mind is that we were just very enmeshed with higher consciousness and we didn't yet have the capacity to entirely see ourselves as separate from it, okay? We couldn't do, say, calculations and understand how something was done, but we could just do it. That's sort of the, um, the what it was like. And we can really see that um, one of the things that really comes to mind when I think of Mu is the image of the Black Madonna or the Black Mary, which is basically a Mary, a vision of Mary, and her skin is basically all painted black. And um, this is very symbolic of the receptivity of the female and Mu. And um, when you have that dark color, it is representing absorbing of, um, of spirit. And so that's a little bit of a vestige from Mu, one of the vestiges from Mu. And how these undercurrents were really expressed was through dancing. If you felt an energy, you would just move with it. You would just express it through dance, okay? It was also expressed through singing and even through maybe um, diff making little things or, or whatever it was, um, but also through pure channelings, the speaking of you know, tongues or just pure states of channeling. Um, that was also part of it. And the expression of beauty was very important as well. So you can see some Venusian undercurrents here. The expression of beauty was um, very important as well as it was, it was believed to show a harmonic with God, the idea of symmetry. And the idea of... Um, having um, of, of receiving an impulse from the cosmos absorbing it and then expressing it this is a huge 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 part of temple culture and temple dances and we can see that today in a couple different things we can see it today in yoga we can see it today in belly dancing we can see it today in a very refined form in eurythmy um, and also in the Gurdjieff movements. So this is the idea that movements are not just something that you do to express yourself, to move. It's, they're also representing something that God is doing. So um, this can mean something, that can mean something, this can mean something. And this idea that movements can be a pure expression of an archetype. This is really, really beginning on Mu, and it began not by intellectually trying to figure it out by looking at someone. It began by literally the body taking certain positions because spirit was moving the body in certain ways, and then you would sense and you would feel what it, what it meant, and you would see what it was doing to your energy channels. So this was an extremely, extremely pure and exalted state where it's almost like Lemuria was taking all of the notes. It was the foundation of the pure expression of humanity um, as God, as an expression of God. And they were really driven. The women were really, really driven. What really kind of made or broke whether they went with something or they rejected something was that it felt good. So this is something that we're actually going to come back to again and again in this lecture today is the idea that they, they sort of followed what felt good. If something felt good in their body, then they knew that it was going to be divine. 
if something felt bad in their body, then it wasn't divine and it was something to be avoided. It was something that was evil or that it was something that it was wrong. And so the, 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 the moral impulse begins to emerge as well because people are feeling it's really the women at this point, but the men were, you know, later on we'll get into what the men were doing, but the women were really feeling, okay, this is a pure energy. This is, this is aligned with God. This is holy. This is good. This is not, this does not feel good. So there was no real understanding why it was good or why something was bad or why something felt good and why something felt bad. There was no analysis. There was no calculations. There was just, this feels good. This feels bad. And the whole reason was is because they were so pure in their being and so pure in their energy that it actually did work that way. They didn't have all of these layers of physicality and history and um, time in the way that we do now. We didn't have that ego mind developed that would tell us and confuse us as to what is good and what is bad the way that we do now. And so the real root of, of discerning good from bad or, or, or good from evil really began in Lemuria by what felt good, what felt bad. And that was how um, things were governed and sort of done on Lemuria for a very long time. It was based on just that impulse of how does it feel, okay? And so if you were in, if you were in Mu and you were to peek in, you would see, you would see tribal dancing, you would see women going into very deep ecstatic trances and expressing themselves. You would see, you know, um, men, women, and children around um, picking it up and being anointed and blessed by what she is expressing, what she is speaking into the world, what she is doing, because as she brings it into her body and as she brings it into herself, she is digesting that information for everybody around her and she is anointing them with it. So as she's channeling, as she's here, as she's speaking, she is taking a very high frequency down from God from spirit that is holy, that a message that needs to be known, felt, and heard. And she's digesting it. She's bringing it down for this dimension and she is giving it. And that is the core of, of spiritual teachings and, and spirituality is this, in, this, this initiation of a spiritual teacher, not stimulating your logical mind, not telling you who to do, what to do, or anything like that but bringing you into a state with them, introducing you to a state, even if it's only your conscious, subconscious mind. And this is where that began, because at the time, that's basically all that was done. There was no, in the very beginning of Mu, there was no, it was very telepathic. There was no physical teaching until the very end. This idea of, 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 of being able to teach in that way. So it was all very much sharing energy directly. Okay. And so basically women would become the pure embodiment of the divine, express it, they would anoint others, and it was because they could build up the energy so strongly in their bodies using their wounds that their bioenergetic field could bas basically become an intermediary between God and humanity. They would become a living intermediary where their whole aura, their whole bioenergetic field was basically resonating at a place that's in between it's it's pulling it's an upward motion and so this was the ability to initiate and this is what women could do and this is what women can do men can do it too but this really began in Mu because of the ability for women to use their womb as a resonating chamber um and just the feminine condition um altogether okay and as time passed, more and more sort of different expressions were coming forward. And we can really see this culture develop. We're beginning to be able to call out the different rays of consciousness by color. We're being able to identify sort of the different things. We're being able to notice all of these nuances now as, as separate things, right? We're beginning to notice nuances. Okay. 
Okay, and as this happened, um, women were also become beginning to become more aware of their own individuality. And the more they engrossed themselves in this, the more they expanded themselves, the more they began to grow. Um, and the more they realized that they were, you know, a unique being too. And this was um, very interesting because before a move, everything was just so interlaced and everybody was just so connected in consciousness that this idea of uniqueness wasn't fully there. So women were also seeing that they were unique as well, as, as you would if you were, you know, expressing yourself in all these various ways, you're going to start to notice how you're different in your uniqueness. And here is a quote from um, Steiner's book, Cosmic Memory, and this is from Rudolf Steiner's book. Okay, so he says, women developed special human powers. Awesome. Their faculty of imagination, which was in alliance with nature, became the basis for a higher development of life ideas. They took the forces of nature into themselves, where they had an after effect in the soul. I need to read that one more time. They took the forces of nature into themselves, where they had an after effect in the soul. So they took on these forces of nature, they took on the rays of consciousness, and that made a pattern on their soul, that made something of them, it changed them. The germs of memory are formed. With memory was also born the capacity to form, this, to form the first and simplest moral concepts. It was from women that the first idea of good and evil arose. Isn't that interesting how he's reminding us here that women began to have memory developed. They began to remember sequences of actions, different events, remember information, picking out those nuances. And this allowed them to string things together to develop moral concepts, to actually understand morality, why we should do things, why we shouldn't do things, and how these can align with our higher self or not. This came from the female. This came from women around Mu. And of course, now we're starting to get into think about Eve, and we're starting to maybe think about the garden a little bit with women developing in this way, or at least I was, and um, it was from women that the first idea of good and evil arose. So women were really able to get in there and discern what was good and what was bad, or what was aligned and what was misaligned. And so you can see that if women were developing that, they were quickly becoming matriarchs and they were quickly becoming the leaders of society. Um, and you know, you can imagine people would go to them to certain, um, to certain women um, and and say you know is this good or is this bad you know please give some order here and so you can see the first rising of the matriarchs the great matriarchs and the great queens of Mu this way and as you can imagine there began to be hierarchies in Mu because some priestesses were revealing themselves to be very astute while others weren't and this is something about just i think in society that is just something that we have a very hard time dealing with and understanding but in mu we see the first the first hierarchies beginning with certain priestesses that were just extremely good and gifted at what they did Okay. And as time progressed, these priestesses would be able to hone, they were honing their abilities, and rather than just noticing and sensing kind of obscure colors or rays or emotions or social things, they were beginning to focus their intuitive capacities on the material world around them more. And they began to identify certain plant life 
and what the vibrational frequency was. And not only that, but also um, the various stars, they were beginning to identify um, just different sort of animals and all these different specifics around them they were beginning to identify and also string them together. So they were beginning to, to, to see how a certain plant would be a very similar resonance to a certain animal, to a certain sound, to a certain color. So they were beginning to build this sort of multi-dimensional lexicon and really creating the sort of esoteric language of resonance that we use today. We think about, we look at, you know, Ayurveda, we look at Chinese medicine, how do we know these herbs do what they do? How do we know that these very obscure, some herbs tend to cleanse out your liver or cleanse out your kidney or relieve a headache or how do you know that something's a diuretic? Well, back in Mu, we used to be able to actually almost merge with the plants or see the plant's aura, and then we would know exactly what that effect would be in a human, um, in an animal. Um, we knew what color it would be associated with. So we began to build this lexicon that we still use today where we were really understanding the archetypal significance of various things and stringing them together, okay? And now Mu is really picking up and we're talking about thousands and we're talking about a, a quite a long period of time here. And now the goddess culture is really forming. Now it's really getting going and we're seeing actually various aspects of the holy feminine. The divine feminine are becoming deified. So now people are, are beginning to look at the various qualities that, a, that the female divine feminine has, and they're starting to create um, deities around them. So we're, we're having, um, you know, a deity that may be the great mother. You know, we have the maiden, we have the crone, the three phases of, of a woman's life. We have, we have this understanding going on. And then we have goddesses that would be very similar to, say, Athena or Ishtar or Astara. They wouldn't be exactly that because those were more created for a masculine era. But we're getting to have these, these goddesses that step forward that represent the holy aspects of a woman. So high priestess, things like this. And society is based around um, aligning with these and understanding these. Okay, and at this time, men did not have any leadership roles. Um, they, they protected the feminine and they saw the feminine as being very close to God. Um, they're linked to God and they're linked to life. They saw themselves as being born from the feminine and so there was something very sacred and very holy about that. But, they were also engrossed in intuition and they were also engrossed in developing themselves. So even though it really wasn't about male leadership or about men at the time, men were still developing and men were still learning to become intuitive. It just wasn't as fast or to the same capacity, but they were still evolving just in their own way. Okay. 